Well, hello there, Virgo. Welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. Today we are having a look at November 2024 for your money and your career. We have two new moons for you guys this month on the first day and the last day. So how spectacular is that? The first one is November 1st. It's a new moon in Scorpio ruled by Pluto, who is now direct, although still in the sign of Capricorn. So still ready to make some bold moves on the night. 19th of November into Aquarius. So this is a deeply transformational um, energy. Um, this is one where hidden information, hidden things may come to light. Whatever you've been doing behind the scenes, you're getting prepared to maybe share with the world. This can be some ideas, be a project you're working on. It can even just be um, some goals and some aspirations. But new moons bring in new, fresh energy, but we do quite often need to let go of the old. Um, new moon in the sign of Sagittarius on the 30th of November rounds out our month. Sagittarius energy is very um, adventurous. Some of you could be planning a trip, um, treating yourself to a nice vacation and typically longer trips with Sagittarian energy there. Um, so this can be really quite fun for you guys. Um, this can be where you're expanding your horizons as well. You're finding new sources of inspiration, maybe uh, taking a new approach at old issues, old problems. Um, but it is very expansive kind of energy. You could have some breakthroughs or, or you could break free of something in your month ahead here as well. Full moon in the sign of Taurus on the 15th. And this can be where something comes to fruition for you or a cycle comes to a close. Taurus deals with all things money related, your house of finances, your values, your possessions, um, your resources, and of course, your own self-worth and knowing your own personal value. So you could kind of really be kind of stepping into your own personal power. And of course, November 19th, Pluto does go into Aquarius. It is direct. And if you've been feeling like you've been going back and forth on something, then this is where you're really going to see your way forward, take some direct action, maybe I mean, have direct, honest, open uh, conversations. But ultimately, it is a rebellious energy. It is a revolutionary energy. And it's bringing your power back and also bringing power back to the people. So it's very interesting times. We are ushered into a new age and hopefully some new opportunities for you guys. We have renewing your life here. Radiant vitality is filling my life. And you see that box of clutter going over the edge there. All right. Time to clean it up. The new and the new moons, there's two, right? And there's a reason for that. New ideas, a new approach. Um, we are cleansing and purging, getting out with the old energies that just don't work anymore and bringing in the new, right? So maybe you're doing new things with your money. Maybe you're finding new investment opportunities. Um, maybe you're looking at your habits and behaviors or your belief systems around money. And uh, those, there's something there changing as well. Some of you could be potentially um, getting rid of some old stuff in order to buy something new, right? And, you know, maybe instead of just uh, throwing it away, you're either repurposing some old items, um, maybe selling old items, or perhaps you're taking a charitable approach and you are donating some items, right? So, I mean, think about if you're getting some new living room furniture or something, you got to do something with the old stuff. And if it's still good, hey, maybe you can make a little bit of, uh, a little bit of money and sell it online or something like that. But whatever it is, we are out with the old so that we can have room for all these new moon energies that are coming in. We have rising above beautiful energy. I see only beauty and grace like the beautiful lotus blossom, right? It is your time to shine. It's your time to rise above challenges. It's your time to rise above negativity and allow yourself to breathe fresh life into something here. So some of you, you're really stepping into your own sense of power, which is a really good thing, right? And that's Pluto and Aquarius that's helping you do that. Um, because we are breaking down old patterns and cycles, and especially with our career, right? Pluto in Capricorn, very much about your career, um, your structures in your life, your life lessons. Maybe you're learning some life lessons, right? And you're like, okay, now I know how to put these 
into effect for my future, right? No point learning a lesson if we don't know what to do with it. So this is where you might be really seeing the future in a little, a little bit of a different light, right? Um, so it can be a very awesome time for regrowth, rebirth, renewal, um, a newer sense of self of who you are. Um, you're making maybe uh, better choices or different choices with what you do for work, what you do for a living, right? So um, the one theme that we've really got for, you know, started an eclipse season, we'll start it before that, but, um, you know, really carrying us forward through the rest of the year is change, right? But change for the better. Right. Because all of these oppressive systems, right, that are in place right now, oppressive workplace, overburdened with taxes and things like that. Right. We feel the pressure. Right. Some of that may be about to be lifted in some way for some. It may take a little while, a little while. And for some, it'll be really quite quick. It just depends where you are in your life. But whatever it is. You are rising above negativity. You are staying positive. You're seeing a solution. You're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And it's absolutely beautiful. This is a time of growth, rebirth, and renewal for you. We have the Ten of Pentacles activating for you for your month ahead. This is nice. Now, the Ten of Pentacles can certainly be a successful end of a cycle for you. Ten of Pentacles is all of the abundance that is flowing in your life. Happy home, happy family, happy bank account, happy workplace, um, abundance of many, many and all forms for you, stability and security for now and in the future. You're planting roots, but you're also growing and blossoming at the same time. So for some of you, you have expansion coming up here for your career path. Is it with the same company? Is it with a different company? Is it a promotion? Is it rewards and accolades? Is it more money, right? Whatever it happens to be, it could just be doors of opportunity opening up for you. It could be that you're getting your household finances under control and there's some good things there. Some of you with the Ten of Pentacles, you could be getting an inheritance as well right? This is where money does flow to us or something that we inherit does come to us. So um, we might not see it coming, right? That's that Plutonian energy there, right? Something hidden um, at the moment is um, maybe coming to light there, but it's a wonderful, wonderful energy with that Ten of Pentacles. And believe you me, <laughs> money and career reading, we want to see the Ten of Pentacles. Funnily enough, it is card number 10 um, for the uh, for our first half of the month, anyway, Pluto is still in Capricorn, and Capricorn is the 10th sign of the Zodiac. So um, this can certainly be that Pluto in Capricorn energy is helping you achieve something or helping you successfully close out one stage of your life so you can welcome in that big energy of growth. We have the Ace of Cups here for your blessings headed your way. So the energy benefiting you the most, most is all this new energy. Now the Ace of Cups, it is water energy. So we can certainly look to the new moon and Scorpio water sign. And so there could be something new that comes about because of, uh, because of that um, new sense of who you are, new creative projects, new opportunities, whatever it happens to be, right? But you're in touch with your emotion, you're in touch with your intuition, and you are creating the life that you want. It's also an energy where we do find a little bit of peace right? We do find, um, you know, this nice, calm energy, but it's happiness and it's joyous and it's really quite wonderful. So some of you haven't, are, you know, lining yourself up for a new job, right? Of some kind. Okay. That'll pay you some really good money with that 10 of pentacles. Some of you could actually be buying a new house or moving to a new location. This can be a really, really positive, um, um, positive way to, um, spend your money, right? Um, you might need a loan and things like that, but it still brings happiness and joy to you as well. Now the aces are um, the start of something, the seed of something new as well. So this can be where you are decluttering your life in some way. You're simplifying something in your life, simplifying your finances, um, especially if you do share money with another person, right? You're streamlining your finances here as well. So maybe you're consolidating any kind of debt, um, you know, you could also be paying off a loan, right? You got a fresh start. Tens are endings, the lead way to new beginnings. So there could certainly be something brand new or something that is going up to the next level. It's super positive. 
Now, yes, the Ace of Cups can also represent potential new love or a new level of commitment, possibly with that Ten of Pentacles as well. So you could be having a change of circumstances with your living situation, which does affect your money. So um, maybe you're in a romantic relationship where you are moving in together, you're getting married, and now you're sharing your resources. So even though you're not necessarily bringing in more money, it feels like you've doubled it, right? That kind of thing. So because it could be a little bit of love and romance in the air. And yes, for some people that could definitely affect your money. This is awesome, awesome energy coming in here. You might even have a little bit of luck, right? When that new moon goes into Sagittarius 30th of November, Sagittarius is the luckiest sign, right? It is ruled by Jupiter, okay? The planet of good luck and good fortune and abundance and all these wonderful things. Now, Jupiter is, um, is retrograde at the moment, but that doesn't matter, right? Because that can sometimes mean that we're going internal before we share our light, before we um, see something external, right? Which is not a bad thing. Um, so it's uh, certainly some personal um, personal growth and some personal energy. So it's pretty awesome, whatever your situation is. Now let's have a look. And the challenge is the Eight of Wands. Hmm. Now in your challenge position, this is not the same as this being in reverse, okay? It's something that is creating a delay, an obstacle, a problem, something it's just we need to deal with before we can move forward, right? So with that eight of wands, what is usually very um it's usually very exciting. There can usually be some good news, some positive communication. So communication, just be aware of communication issues. We do have Mercury going retrograde on the 25th, and Mercury will be in shadow period two weeks before that. So the latter part of November, there could be some potential for misunderstandings, miscommunication, that kind of thing. There could be a potential for um, if you're making any travel plans, okay, the Eight of Wands can be about travel, right, moving forward, forward momentum. So there could be some delays. There could be some issues making travel plans. Just make sure that you um, really do um, take your time and make sure you double check and triple check any kind of reservations that you do have, all right, because there could be something there um, that you're missing that you didn't quite see. And there could be changes in your travel plans as well. All right. So just keep that in mind. But the eight of wands is also a very electrifying and a very busy energy. It's like we're busy, but we're getting some, some things done. So with that eight of wands being a challenge for you, if you're looking for, you know, a little bit more calm and quiet in the month ahead, because we've got some crazy stuff going on the last couple of months, right? Then, you know, perhaps you do need to embrace a little bit more of that Ace of Cups energy, some peace and some calm and some stillness, right? Rather than overexerting yourself with that Eight of Wands. So just be a little bit cautious of how much um, activity and responsibilities that you do take on, okay? Um, because just because you can doesn't mean you always should, all right? So try and scale things back a little bit if you can, okay? Another thing that we can um, find a challenge with the Eight of Wands right there is um, being a little bit reactive, okay? Um, so overreacting to things, uh, things like that. So um, even though something can be really quite positive, we don't want to be too, too, too impulsive on something here as well, right? So um, again, just kind of make sure that you do take that step back if you have opportunities, because there can be a world of opportunities um, coming in here for you, right? And so we just need to kind of quick, you just quickly assess um, each one and, you know, kind of make a make a decision or make an informed decision, right? With that, um, with that energy. All right. So that eight of wands is a super positive card, right? But it is causing you a little bit of a challenge. And it could, of course, be part of the challenge is not getting stuck on a problem and looking out into the future because the eight of wands is usually really positive energy, especially in regards to manifestation. So sometimes, you know, we do need to be reminded, right, that wherever we put our intentions and our energy, it is always what we send out that is um, creating our reality in the future um, and even for today, right? So we need to remember that. So even if, you know, there's some great energies coming in here, just make sure that the energy you are putting out is what you want to attract back to you. All right. <laughs> Sometimes we get a little bit, a little bit down. We can't control all of our thoughts. Okay. But we can certainly stop ourselves in our tracks if we feel ourselves going down to negative Nelly town, right? This is 
traditionally a very positive energy, right? And we want to we want to keep it that way, okay? Um, we also have here the Three of Swords. All right, now this is your advice from Spirit to look on the bright side. Don't dwell on the negative. Make sure that you look for the positive. Remember, any door that does close is leading you towards something better, right? For every door closes, that closes, another one opens. But we do need to be open and aware of it, right? So remember, remember here is that something may get you a little bit down, all right? Whether it's already happening for you or whether it's, you know, I mean, if you're looking for a new job or something, Ace of Cups, something that, you know, kind of may, maybe is a little bit fulfilling as well as rewarding um, financially, right? You might need to uh, sometimes explore a few options and you may get a, a, a no here and there, right? As does happen. We don't get every single job um, that we apply for, right? Not every investment opportunity is the big windfall that we're, that we're hoping for. So with that Three of Swords, Spirit says, you know, if something, if something is disappointing, if something is, you know, not working for you, or if you do get that proverbial door slammed in your face, you need to trust the process and you need to know that there is something else that's opening up for you. Also, remember, stay positive. And we already addressed that with your eight of wands. Okay. Um, now some of you may find yourself in a situation where you have to look for a new job or a new place to live or something because maybe that, um, maybe that, um, uh, choice has been, you know, kind of seen seemingly taken away from you because it may not be by your own hand that something may come to an end. And we do need to address that because the three of swords can certainly be a heartbreak card, right? It's a divorce card. And, you know, so it could be parting ways with a, with a company and, uh, you know, or with a position or something, right? So, you know, it can be very heartbreaking and heart shattering there, but we do need to process our feelings and emotions, pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and then we need to put ourselves back out there, right? Um, you know, because we do need to um, look for that something better, right? Because it can be that sometimes we're, we're a little bit stuck or we feel trapped. And if we've been there too long, we get like a tower moment kind of thing. And this is where the universe gives us a helping hand, even though it doesn't feel like it. And, um, this is where it's like we're being pushed a little bit to, um, to be, uh, just outside of our comfort zone a little bit, which is actually where all the opportunities and the rewards are anyway. We've got the King of Swords at the back of the deck. So clarity, a sense of purpose, taking charge, taking the lead. There could be an incredibly important conversation that you are having in the month ahead. It could be with a significant other. It could be with a family member. It could be with a boss. It can be with someone you don't know. And so that King of Swords can be where you're negotiating something, right? Uh, really good for negotiation there. Um, negotiating your salary, negotiating a position, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the King of Swords can also to really give you some advice um, and advice that makes sense, right? But it's not um, not emotional though, right? So the King of Swords can be a very helpful person, right? Who is maybe a little bit seemingly cold and calculating, but ultimately really good at getting the point across and making decisions. So this can be a good influence for you. But again, this can be your energy here as well. The kings take the lead. The kings are experts in their own field. Um, and they do have, especially the king of swords, clarity and a sense of purpose, knowing what they want and knowing how to get it or figuring out how to get it. But the king of swords can represent um, you know, really digging deep into some information or some details as well, right? So um, make sure that if there's something that you are offered or an opportunity that you come across that you really do take the time to read it and to read the fine print and to ask questions if, um, if necessary, if there's something you don't understand, something that's not clear or something that's not even mentioned right? But is important to you, right? So ask for that. But the King of Swords is an awesome energy for negotiation, for going out on job interviews, for communicating with your family or with your spouse, right? Um, and it's really like the fog has lifted. So it's a really awesome energy um, coming in there, whether it's you or someone else. Focus on your priorities. Well, the King of Swords certainly gives you some focus. Where you put your focus is where you receive your outcome. Eight of Wands, right? 
Your priorities are calling to you, which may produce a feeling of anxiety unless you give them the time and attention that they and you deserve. Even a small amount of time devoted to your priorities will help you feel better and more confident. And have courage to ask for and accept help. Asking for help is a sign of strength, as it is accepting it as it is, as is, excuse me, I'm going to start that again, tongue tied. Asking for help is a sign of strength, as is accepting it as it is offered to you. Very often when you ask the universe for help, prayers are answered through other people. Be sure to accept this assistance as well as give it to others as you are guided. All right. We don't want to be stubborn in our energy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave that there for you guys. That's what we have for you for the month ahead. I hope there was something here for you. Um, if so, please do like, share, subscribe. I truly appreciate that. It does help my channel get seen. It lets me know you resonate with the reading as well, which is the most important thing for me, actually. Um, but I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.